Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be reviewing the NVIDIA Orin Nano. This will be the developer's kit. So I am going to let ChatGPT uh, do the explanations and the summary at the end. So uh, take it away, ChatGPT. NVIDIA Jetson Orin Nano. The NVIDIA Jetson Orin Nano is an impressive piece of technology that packs a lot of power into a tiny package. This compact computer is designed for use in AI-powered edge devices, such as drones, robots, and autonomous vehicles. One of the most notable features of the Jetson Orin Nano is its AI processing capabilities. It boasts an impressive 1024-core NVIDIA GPU and 6-ARM version 8.2 cores, making it capable of handling complex AI algorithms with ease. It also has hardware support for popular AI frameworks such as TensorFlow and PyTorch, so developers to get started with AI projects. The Jetson Orin Nano is incredibly small and light, making it ideal for use in portable devices. Despite its size, it still manages to pack a lot of power, which is a testament to the engineering behind it. The device is also energy efficient, consuming just 7 to 15 watts of power, which makes it ideal for use in battery-powered devices. Despite its powerful processing capabilities, the Jetson Orin Nano is incredibly small and lightweight. It measures just 103 by 90.5 by 35 millimeters and weighs only 176 grams. The size and weight allows use in portable devices such as drones and robots. The device has 8GB 128-bit LPDDR5 memory, which provides high-speed 68 gigabits per second data transfers and helps to support complex AI algorithms. The memory is shared between the CPU and GPU. The first thing you're going to want to do is to go to the NVIDIA site, and we're going to have to download the software that we need for the device, for the Orin uh, the Jetson or a Nano. So just follow the links for products and then choose uh, Jetson and then just scroll to the bottom here. Let's go down here to the Jetson software. We'll want to click the button to learn more about it. And it'll then take you to this page and just keep scrolling down. What we want, it, if you download the Jetpack SDK, you'll get the Linux with it. So there's no need to download those separately. So we'll go ahead and get this. And this is telling us that we want Jet, we're gonna be looking at Jetpack 5.1.1, which is the, the release that we want for this. And so I, there are two ways that you can install this. Uh, the first is you can install the SDK onto an x86 platform using either uh, Ubuntu 18.04 or 20.04 as the host operating system. It will then plug into the uh, Orin Nano or Orin NX using the USB uh, USB front facing port or UFF. That's the USB C port that's on the device, and then you can uh, treat that as a storage device on your x86 machine and then you can install it the reason the choice and the reason why you might want to choose one over the other is the Orin nano uh, developer board has the ability to uh, install an nvme board however nvidia doesn't supply that method to install it on the sd card so and if you want to install the software on the nvme you'll have to use uh, the uh, for the, the you'll have to use the SDK to do that with so that's the SDK manager method here and so yeah you'll want to install this one uh, and this will be again on an x86 platform this is not you don't install this on the Orin Nano so I hope you understand that this one on the SD card method, you're going to burn this to an SD card. You need at least a 32 gig 
SD card, I would recommend going 64 gig uh, if you're doing any projects with AI. And then just simply select which one you have. If you have a, uh, a Nano SOM like I do, you'll choose that one. If you have the NX SOM, you'll choose this one. So the developer kits are slightly different. Now over here on this one, you can select which of those two you are uh, wanting to install. It will actually automatically detect it. So it'll pick up the right one. So I just want to pick this up. This is a fairly large uh, download, about 10 gig in compressed form. It expands out to about 22 gigabytes or so. Uh, so yeah, you can see right away when you're putting this on an SD card, 32 is going to be pretty tight if you want to do development work. The software for from uh, Bellina However, Bellina does not have a version for ARM. So if I, <laughs> if I attempt to go over here and I'll launch the Bellina app image, you'll notice that it's an X80, X64 image. I did not see an ARM-based ARM image out there. So if you know of one, let me know because yeah, there's no way to do that. Uh, you can pull it. Uh, it's going to bring it down as uh, JP511 uh, or Orin Nano SD card image zip. And you can unzip that file and it will create this SD blob image down here. As you can see, it's about 22 gig. So I, I, I'm just going to use a, a, a DD command and we'll, we'll say input format is SD blob. And the out, out, we're going to send it to the out device, SDA, and block size will make, I guess, let's just do 4K. And then um, I will set status to progress so we can kind of keep an eye on it. Thing right, it should take off and start working. There it goes. All right, so this will take some time, obviously, uh, at uh, 50 megabits a second. This will take quite a while. So I'll be back when this is done. Uh, it'll take a minute to boot up. As you can see, we're stuck kind of in a black screen here. But okay, so I'm I'm going to show you a couple of things that this has. Uh, as you notice, it has kind of a rudiment, uh, rudimentary BIOS. This is the first time I have ever seen that on an ARM device. So yeah, you can select the language, you can go into the device manager, and you have all kinds of settings here from the RAM disk configuration, your authorization, your deliver uh, health manager, driver for health manager, the secure boot configuration. Now, I, I, I noticed that on secure boot, they have it set to disabled. So I assume that their device does not do secured boot, but I suppose that if you're installing this through the SDK, although I, I have not tried that yet, there may be a way to do that. So, but it leaves it off by default. And then we'll, we'll just go ahead and hit continue. So eventually, after you start that up, it should show you this screen. And you can accept the terms and then choose your, your language. And it's spinning. And then your keyboard layout. What is your time zone? And then you can fill in the information to create your account. This is allowing you to set up the partition size so it's going to expand out the SD card to fill in the rest of the disk. If you want to install the Chromium browser, you can do it now. However, I'll tell you, it takes quite a while to do it. So I, I decided to do it later. <laughs> you, can, you can always install that later if you want it. And now it'll actually create the system in, in, on the same SD card as you are using to execute. Oh, it's removing all the stuff that I didn't want. This will install a minimal version of the uh, Ubuntu desktop. So if, if you want things like uh, man pages and all that, you'll, you'll have to unminimize. So let's just reboot it now. And uh, that should take care of it.
So the first thing you have here is you have a power mode that you can switch between 15 watts and 7 watts. Uh, that allows you to use, consume less power, so if you're connecting this to a battery. And they do handle be power between 5 volts and 20 volts. The um, power brick that comes with it is a 4 amp, 19 volt uh, power amp. So, yeah, if you want to use that. But, yes, there is a USB-C connector that you can plug in and, and drive power from that as well. Uh, the next thing is you have these things called the Tegra stats, which I think this is more of a, it's kind of a monitor as to what's going on in the system, but it's kind of a raw dump. I mean, I can see swap space and and that kind of thing. So I, I don't really find that too valuable. I'm not sure why it's there. Uh, then there's the, the, the jets and power GUI, they call it. I'll just wait for this to come up. And wait. There we go. So this shows you what your each individual CPU is doing, uh, as well as the GPU and what frequencies they're running at. So the max frequency on the CPU is 1.5 gigahertz, and the max frequency on the GPU is 650 megahertz. So if I uh, if I come out here. Bring this up. I've downloaded JTOP. JTOP is a, oh, okay. Uh, JTOP is a utility for this particular device. It's for, it runs on most of the NVIDIA Jetson systems, whether they, even the old Jetson Nano. So you can see I have six processors here. It shows you what percentage of my memory is in use. And you can see that a good chunk of it is gone during because this shares memory with the GPU. So yeah, so I have a pretty good sized block that's knocked off from the U, the loading of the operating system and the desktop environment, which is which is GNOME. And then at the top end, I've got another piece that's knocked off that is used for to provide graphics. Uh, memory for the GPU. So yeah, I'm kind of constrained here on an 8 gig machine. I feel a little bit constrained on the amount of memory that's available to me. Also, um, yeah, it's taking about 20 gig of disk uh, and I have a 64. That's about a third, about a third of it. Yeah. And then it gives me a confirmation on these uh, other things like the Jetpack 511. L4T is 35.3.1. And then we can go and look at various things. We can toggle over to GPU here and see uh, what it's doing. Just draw this out a little bit. Well, it's not particularly busy, although I can probably make it busy. Let's bring up a web page. It will, yeah, it will push things into it. So. Let's see if we can find one that's kind of busy, like a news site or something. Maybe that one might have a lot of activity on it. Yeah, it's got a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. So what, as I mentioned, um, one of the one of the the limitations of the Nano is that it has a a decoder that is uh, tied to the GPU. So it has a GPU accelerated uh, video decoder and that will take you up to uh, 60 frames a second 4K. It also, it, but it, it does not have a complete video encoder. So it will do 1080, 30 frames a second, but that's it. So it doesn't have anything else. So if there's any in encoding that needs to be done, that's going to fall to the CPU. Now, the next model up, the NX, that has a full set of encoders and decoders for 4K and, and, uh, and HD as well. So, uh, yeah, that I feel like that is a big limit here. Let's take a look at the CPUs and what they're doing. So it gives you kind of a breakdown on each of the, the I have six, and it's showing them all and it's showing you what's going on. And then we can look at memory and where it's being used. 
and also we can look at the engine itself and then uh, we can also look at the fan and then just some general information about the stats in the system. This is a nice little utility uh, to kind of help you with things that are going on. Here, let's take a look and, and see. Now it's set about 20 gig. It's about right. We are running uh, Ubuntu 2004.6 LTS. It's the 5.10 kernel. 1980 packages uh, are installed and of course GNOME. I think this is 3.38 on the GNOME. We'll take a look here and verify that. If it's yeah three thirty six dot eight so close, it's uh, yeah it's kind of behind. I don't know why. Uh, and Nvidia is always a genera a generation behind on the uh, operating systems. When twenty oh four was out, they were still on sixteen oh four and eighteen oh four, and so their support is for eighteen oh four and twenty oh four. And I suppose once 18.04 drops uh, their support, then they'll have to move to 22.04. So, and by that time, we'll probably have 24.04. <laughs> so, yeah, they're always behind. As far as uh, some of the things that, uh, some bugs that I have seen here is, if I want to change the background here, and I want to add a picture, so I've got some others loaded in here. You'll notice right away, it selected the top one, but this is grayed out. Yeah, it, it's just ignoring them. So I was able to change the backdrop, but I had to go in and manually change the XML. Uh, so yeah, you could Google it and, and see how to do that. Okay, it's done. It probably took a couple of minutes to get through that. But we can scroll back up through here and see what we got. So we're missing a mal malware scanner. We do have a passing grade at 70 here, though. And let's just see what kinds of problems we have. Going all the way back up. So, yeah, the interface is a promiscuous interface. And that's the only issue we have there. Uh, yeah, it's old, but that's not my problem. That's theirs. So um, I did run the Ubuntu hardening script, and <laughs> that was a bit of a mistake. Apparently, the way NVIDIA manages the partitions and also the applications that are installed on those partitions, uh, it will create a problem if you set your UMask other than the default hardening script, just it, it made a complete mess of the system and I ended up having to reinstall it. It couldn't even run after a while, after once the file permission started kicking in, I started seeing all kinds of errors in the logs and so forth. Let's look at, I've already installed HTOP, let's just see. 1.5 gig of memory, 186 tasks, 386 threads. Looks like CPU, well, we can collapse it, I think. Well, we can do it here. Okay, let's look at glances now. So we have about a 3% CPU utilization. About 28% of my memory is gone. Even with the unminimized, I was still seeing about this. Uh, the only difference between the minimized and unminimized environment is about a gig of disk space that's taken up. As far as the system load is concerned, that's about the same. I mean, I, I don't really notice any difference here at all. So we've had a chance to kind of see how the machine works and, and some kind of kick the tires. I'll come back in a future episode and go over some of the AI capabilities, but it's going to take me time to get used to the board and what all the capabilities are. There is a lot of stuff that this board does. So I think what I'd like to do is to turn this back over to ChatGPT and let AI explain uh, what some of the features and benefits of the board are. So take it away, ChatGPT. 
The NVIDIA Jetpack SDK includes a range of tools and libraries for building and optimizing deep learning models, as well as libraries for computer vision and video analytics. The CUDA Toolkit is a software development kit for building high-performance computing applications on the Jetson platform. It includes a range of libraries and tools for parallel computing and GPU programming, including support for C, C++, and Python. TensorRT is an NVIDIA Deep Learning Inference Optimizer and Runtime that helps to optimize deep learning models for deployment on the Jetson platform. TensorRT can be used to accelerate inference performance, reduce memory footprint, and improve power efficiency. VisionWorks is a software development kit for building computer vision applications on the Jetson platform. It includes a range of libraries and tools for image and video processing, including support for OpenCV and OpenGL. DeepStream is a software development kit for building video analytics applications on the Jetson platform. It includes a range of libraries and tools for real-time video processing and analytics, including support for object detection, classification, and tracking. The NVIDIA Jetson Orin Nano Developer Kit includes the Jetson Orin Nano 8GB SOM and the Jetson Orin Nano Carrier Board for $499. The Orin Nano can be expanded by replacing the Orin Nano SOM module with an Orin NX SOM. The module will boost the performance of your development kit from 40 tops to 70 tops using the Orin NX 8GB SOM for an additional $479. Overall, the NVIDIA Jetson Orin Nano is impressive, offering a lot of power in a compact and energy-efficient package. Its AI processing capabilities make it ideal for use in a wide range of edge devices, and its connectivity options make it easy to integrate into existing systems. Whether you're a developer looking to build an AI-powered device or a hobbyist looking to experiment with cutting-edge technology, the Jetson Orin Nano is definitely worth considering. The software features of the Jetson Orin Nano provide developers with a powerful and flexible platform for building AI applications. The NVIDIA Jetpack SDK includes a range of tools and libraries for building and optimizing deep learning models, as well as libraries for computer vision and video analytics. This makes it easy for developers to get started with their AI projects and build high-performance applications on the Jetson platform at a much lower entry cost than traditional development workstation class PCs. So as you heard from ChatGPT, uh, I can tell you that since this is my turn to, talk, to wrap this up, uh, when I initially set up ChatGPT, I started asking questions and it started providing responses, but then I did some, my homework and checked the answers from ChatGPT. Uh, I don't know if it got it wrong or whether it, it, it just didn't know about the development kit because the specs were wrong, the chip information was wrong, uh, even the dimensions and the weight of the board were wrong. About that. So I had to do quite a bit of correcting on this one. So, uh, But let me tell you what some of my thoughts are on the NVIDIA uh, or a Nano. I think it's top heavy. I think it's it's uh, I'm losing too much memory over to the system. And I don't think you're really getting a lot in terms of the number of cores for your GPU or the speed of your GPU. It might be fine for development, but you're not going to be able to do the kind of testing you would need to do in order to qualify an AI application before taking it into production. You're going to have to take that code and go run it closer to the machine's hardware in order to certify it before you could get it into the operational environment. And that's an added cost. Uh, I like to, I mean, I like the fact that there's now a BIOS. That's the first time I have seen that. And it's also the first time I've seen uh, UEFI supported. Normally in the ARM environments, we have, there's a whole plethora of ways to boot the machine, none of which are standard. So anyway, uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please send, it to, send a share off to your friends and let them know about it. And, uh, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Uh, always happy to have additional people here to to uh, comment and uh, drive the channel forward as to what you want to see. So with that, I hope to see you in the next video and bye for now.